Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Maybe one day. Good morning. Today is the 12th of November. For some reason, the escalator is not working at Birmingham International Station. And uh, this is part 17 of a slight shambolic shuffle around the 2023 NEC Classic Motor Show. I do apologize in advance for the incorrect information, which will never to be happen. If I fall over, if I generally make a hash of it, the escalator not working is indicative of the quality of the videos that are going to be coming out. I'm afraid it's just the way that it goes on this channel. Okay, viewers, here we are in Hall 5. I've not actually been in this hall yet. It is very big. It will take me a while to get around here. But at least we've done most of the other halls. There are a couple of things I need to go back at the end and do because I've missed them. But here we are. Dream Car Giveaways, Course B. I wonder if that's like a two litre in there. Yeah, it's facelift one. I can tell you straight away that it is because of the gear lever and the grill. I wonder if that's a red top that's been painted blue. This is not the original engine in this Nova GSI though. I think that's probably the 2 litre turbo out of an Astra HVXR. Something like that. It's amazing what engines you can put in these Novas. The brakes on them actually are really bad, unless it's a GSI. A lot of people fit Astra brakes to the front. That one's sort of 91, 92. I imagine, yeah, somebody's put better brakes than that. We've got larger wheels as well. And this sounds Skyline GTR. Probably an R34. Yes, it is. Someone's put some interesting yellow bits in there. RB26, of course. Because uh, just the way that they came. Mark II Escort 1.6 Sport. Have we had an engine modification? Yes, we have. By uh, Wayne Mitchell, it looks like. It still looks like a Pinto to me, though. The Chevette. That is a uh, two-door saloon Chevette, um, pre-facelift. Please do not touch the shove it Chevette. I've heard of this one. Here we go, 1977 two-door saloon, owned by automotive artist. Saab copper bronze. Excellent. Chevette L, yes, I have driven the Chevette L. It was a four-door saloon in 1980, a bit later than this, a facelift model. Um, they're not the best car to drive in my opinion, but some people like them, don't they? 9192 Peugeot 205 GTI. The fascinating painting on the bonnet. Uh, the Talman edition. Have we got a leather interior in here? Oh my gosh, we have. It's like a sort of 205 Gentry or something. Those were not actually GTIs. Um, very nice, I love the colour of that. Got some tractors here. Uh, what does it say? National Vintage Tractor and Engine Club. Fordson Major. John Deere. It's a 41. Runs on petrol paraffin, apparently. And there's a little piglet down there as well. Let's go and see the Great British Car Journey stand. The Chevette that I drove was at the Great British Car Journey uh, back in September. I've actually got another video from there that I haven't released yet. 
But yes, you can drive all sorts of minis there. They've bought lots of minis this time. I've driven minis before, so I've never driven one there. But one thing I haven't seen before is this Clubman Estate. 1978, this one. But it's actually in really nice condition. Yeah, I've not seen that one before. I've got to say, it's a Mini 30 from 1989, I think that one is. This is a very, very late Mini. It'd be a, a 2000, this one. Someone has been driving it a lot recently, which is why it's covered in dirt. If I behave myself, viewers, I might be able to go back to Great British Car Journey. I have been speaking with um, one of the chaps at works there already this weekend. And um, yes, we might be able to go back there and drive something else. Just in kind of Swiss specification, I suppose, 1966 Mini. Then what looks like a Shelby Cobra. If that's a real Shelby Cobra, then that'll be worth a lot of money. Now we've got a very, very nice. This is an XK150. This one. Yeah, it's a 150. Advertising brake fluid. Mm, that is, that is pretty tasty actually. Of course, we'd advertise the uh, the Mont Victory up to that point. 51, 53, 55, 56, 57. Midland Red Express Bus, 1965. It's very an information sheet on that because uh, public service vehicles are not my strong suit. Midland Red High Speed Coach. Oh, of course, Midland Red actually made their own ones. We might have a look at that later, but we've got to got to keep going for the moment. Under the Ford Control Fire Appliance, 1963. Fortunately, that is the petrol one, so we can talk about it. Excellent. That's um, it's a great number plate too. And then we've got something really rather old here, 1930 Austin. 12 4 Heavy Toro Deluxe. I forgot actually, this is Advertising Transport Museum Withal, where we have been and we've done some slightly shambolic shuffles there. We've got loads and loads and loads of buses and trams and trolley buses and all sorts of things. Very good museum actually, that one. 1974 Zagato Zele. Look at this tiny little thing. Electric cars from almost 50 years ago. And then on earth is uh, this thing. That looks incredibly old. It's like over a hundred years old probably. I'm right, yes, a Peerless PX1880 from 1914. That is rather old. And we've got a BRM here. Single seater. I'm going to you correctly, this is like a sort of um, early F1 car. Uh, just one second, yes. So we just have the uh, remembrance day, two minutes silence. Sort of <laughs> always um, when I'm here, because they do it every year, it makes me feel that like what I'm doing is very trivial, which of course it is, but um, you seem to enjoy watching it, so we'll keep going. My goodness me, I've, I've heard of one of these. Um, this is a um, Sunbeam Venezia Superleggera. These were made from 1963 to 66. Looks very much like this is based on um, something like these of Aldax platform, but I'm not entirely sure. It's a very stylish car. It's sort of early to mid 60s look. A lot of these cars that came out of Italy had is absolutely lovely. So many sort of look like that. That's another one there. I've never really even heard of these. 
Yeah, I prefer the look of this one. It looks a bit like the front end of a, of like a Singer Vogue or something, and of course it's Sunbeam. Um, that is absolutely extraordinary. That's 66, that one. Look down the sort of lines of this. It looks like an AC Greyhound or something like that, or maybe a Lancia. Just a sort of look about it, but that is um, amazing. Do you, you buy these over here? Probably not. More root stuff over here. Singer. Maybe a Singer 9, I'm not quite sure. 1963 Singer Vogue Series 2 Estate. So you, so you can kind of see resemblance, although both the Nets here are badged as a sunbeam. Based on the Hillman Super Minx, this one. So this will have the, uh, I think it was a 1.6 engine originally these had. Then uh, Aldax car. Let's get this right, a gazelle, that's it. Based on the Aldax mix. Sort of look a little bit like a Sunbeam Rapier as well, again on the same platform. Commentary plate, probably registered by Roots themselves. Uh, it's a 1960 a Gazelle 3B. And then a Singer Chamois, we'll, we'll sing it in. Singer Chamois, this will be a Mark II, I think, 66. Yeah, Singer Chamois Sport. Looks good on the mini light wheels, or mini light style wheels. I have driven an M, but I haven't driven a uh, Chamois. Very sort of nice interior with bits of wood and things. Looks very luxurious. The Imp I drove, ironically, of course, the Great British Car Journey. Right, let's have a look at some Jowett's, the world's oldest one-make car club. Jowett Jupiter, only made I think sort of about 1950 to 1953. Jowett kind of had problems with the engines in both the Jupiter and the Javelin, here's the Javelin. And um, yeah, that was a, <laughs> a really sort of advanced design but they couldn't get it to work properly and they sort of went under. I think it was 53 they went under. This one is a uh, 52, deluxe model. Is that really the new price of back in 52? What year is this Jupiter? Uh, that one is... Ooh, it doesn't actually say. I don't like it when I don't say these things. It makes me look like an idiot. But I'm not an idiot anyway. This is Bradford. Yeah, it is 52. This is sort of previous generation, but they kept it on sale because it, um, it's actually uh, quite lucrative in terms of getting the money, rather than all the advanced engineering that the uh, Javelin and the Jupiter had. It's a shame, it was, it was a very, very kind of sort of um, self-contained company. You know, the engines and things were made actually in-house. 265, that's not a good bargain for me. It's a uh, Challenge Jason. Only 36. Trip over that, viewers. It was um, very, very close to happening there, but not quite. 95 pounds, hard exchange bargain. 1927, Jowett Longford Tora. So this thing is, it's very old, but it's not as old as this one. Which is, um, is that 1913, and in amazing condition. Jowett Tiller. So you can see no steering wheel, you get a tiller instead. That would be terrifying. So we're not going to look at the motorbikes, we don't know anything about them, but we can look at the West Berkshire Vehicle Club here. It's a classic vehicle club, I should say. It's just in the Zeta. 
Oh, no, it's a Heinkel Trojan. These were built, ooh, which I forget. Oh, in Croydon, that's it. Uh, 1963. I just uh, find these absolutely terrifying, the prospect of driving that. Um, doesn't fill me with um, glee, I'm afraid. Then we've got uh, some kind of MG Midget, I think this is. So, um, take a look at the find an information sheet. No. Never mind, this one's got one. 1969. Mini Countryman Mark II with the 998cc engine. Yeah, definitely a Mark II. Still got the old house style door handles and still got the exposed hinges and the sliding windows and things like that. Looks like it's sort of ready for a family picnic here. And there's a, let's get that right, that is a J2, I think. Sorry, J4. I do apologize. The J4 was the thing that actually the Sherpa was mainly based on when that came out. Sorry. And that came out in um, 1974, five, I think it was. This is a really late one, actually. Um, 72. By that time, it was called the Austin Morris van, although it, these off Austin and Morris badges and all that sort of thing. The names that Leyland called their commercial vehicles were extremely confusing. They kept changing the badges on them. And we've got more route stuff, 1960 Singer Gazelle Series 3A, 3B over there. That is, um, again, it's a very stylish part of this sort of era of British car making when everyone wanted to be like the Americans. Singer SM1500, 1952. That's very nice. I can't say I know much about stuff like that. And this is even older. Look at that. 1908 Singer Wagonette. Uh, it's not the most comfortable seats I've ever seen. We've got a nice klaxon there, though. It's just some bits of wood kind of nailed together, the bodywork. Got the Hillman Owners Club here. That looks like a very early um, Aldax mix. Do we have some information down here? Uh, yes, a 57 Series 1. I think this is the year that the Aldax mixes actually came out. This is the original sort of look that they had. They lasted for quite a while. I think they actually lasted uh, for about 10 years. And we've got a super mix. I've always wondered what the actual relation in terms of engineering was between the mix and the super mix. This is one of the earlier ones with the um, interesting rear window. The later ones are the sort of flatter style of rear window. Uh, this is a 1962, I think these are a 1.6 engine from memory. And um, this is a later Aldax mix. Unlike most people in... Um, in this um, in this country, Rhodes decided that they wanted this sort of American style annual facelift, and so that's what they used to do. That's why these two cars, which aren't that dissimilar in age, have a different grille at the front. More route stuff. We've got 1966 Sunbeam Alpine with the uh, 1725cc engine that makes a Series Five. 1967 Sunbeam Alpine, again a Series 5 with a 1725cc engine. That sort of cream one looks a lot of one used in Get Carter. Uh, another Harrington Alpine, that's the second one we've actually seen. Um, 63 this one. And fun for all the family because there are some extremely tiny seats in the back. Um, if your children are sort of paraplegic or something because the headroom is bad. The leg is bad. It's another Harrington. Yes, it is. Uh, what year is this one? It says 63 again. 
It's a very stylish design. I'm surprised that they were like a conversion. They weren't sort of a full production model. Oh, there we go. We're going to Sunbeam V8. Presumably it's makes it a... a uh, maybe it's not a Tiger. They took the Tiger on the side of it, so maybe it's a later conversion. Series 4A. It's a nice colour, that one. Ah, here are the Sunbeam Tigers. 65. That originally was a blue car. Now it's red, which looks good. Racing one here. The embarrassing thing about um, about these, in a way, was that how do I put this? It has a Ford engine in it, but Chrysler increased their control of route screw between 64 and 67, and um, they sort of had to tell them to stop making it eventually because, well, got the wrong engine in it. So that's the 67. That must be um, one of the last of them then. Surprised actually that there are a number of these that still remain. This one's got a this one's got a hard top. This is actually the original colour. 65. What are all that stuff's doing in the back? It's, it's a sort of back robbery or something. That just uh way that it goes. Let's go round this way. More tasty treats here. That was a 66. It looks so good. I bet they make a great noise as well. And then we've got some earlier sunbeams here. They look like the cars that were used in uh, that old Hitchcock film. If it gets called To Catch a Thief, I think it was released in about 1954 from memory. And then uh, Sterling Moss has a helmet there. Must have driven one of these. Those helmets don't look like they've got afforded much protection really at all, but I suppose better than nothing. It's very, very stylish cars, aren't they? Very glamorous looking cars. Such a massive choice of sports cars if you were lived in Britain in the 1950s. I think this is my favourite car. Look at this. Oh, one of the first beige leather interior of the day. Very nice viewers. There is uh, His Royal Highness. I don't know quite why he's there, but... There is uh, the King. And we got some more imp action here, although some of them are not <laughs> badged as imps. If it's a... A singer is a chamois. That is a Sunbeam Imp Sport, 1971. That looks amazing. And we've got uh, the singer chamois. That is a 64. Sixth anniversary, as it is indeed. And then we've got a Hillman Husky. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this colour. Oh my gosh. Uh matured into a more grown-up shade of pink. 68, this one. There was also a van version of Comma. Someone's put fitted some different seats in there. That's not a bad idea. It's quite sort of practical, even though the engine's in the back. There's a lot of space in there, but I don't think I'd be able to drive that around in that view. I think people would laugh at me. Um, then here is an Imp Californian, 1967, the sort of coupe version. Very, very nice. Speaking of pink cars, how about some Vauxhall Crest of PAs? Uh, three of them here. Two of them are in the same shade of pink. Which one's, uh, I think one's a V-Lux, which is the sort of lower specification model. Um, and one's a sort of bubblegum pink. I think somebody's been watching that Barbie film. That's probably what's happened, isn't it? See, actually, uh, if any of them have the different rear window layout, because the rear windows did change later on in production. I think I managed to do the Queen of one of these, from memory. Um, they all seem to have the same rear window layout. I think they did change at some point, but my knowledge of such things is quite limited. So, yes, two crashes in the V-Lox. And then we've got some 
old Vauxhalls and Opals here. Another one of these um, Novas. This one looks like it's got the um, standard engine there. So it'd be a 1.6. They made the Nova GSI right up to 1994. It's the last type of Nova to be in production. Um, so this is sort of 92, 93. But that's fast. It's got electric windows, all the luxury. And uh, yes, that famous um, hazard light switch view is. That is very, very nice actually. Got the sticker on there with the pre 1995 area code, Starbridge. Mark 1 Astra Twin, the Opal Cadet D. This is 1982. It was originally with the um, uh, 1.2 overhead valve Opal engine, which produced like no power at all. This one now has a 2 litre red top in it, because of course it does. You could buy both the Opal Cadet version and the Mark 1 Astra at the same time in this country. When I was younger, uh, our nanny used to sometimes drive us around in an, an old um, Cadet Berlina, it was back in 82. And a Calibra, looking very, very red, don't touch a Calibra, that is Calibra 4x4, that turbo 4x4. Uh, so K9293, I don't know what that's doing here. I'm not sure we can even talk about it, viewers. I will uh, go and have a look at the back of it for you and, and tell you. Just as well I checked, viewers, because we don't talk about diesels on this channel. We do have a talk about uh, the, Bedford, the Bedford Beagle, that's an HA. 6869 registration. These were made all the way up to, I think, 1983 from memory. Uh, no, Bedford Dormobile, this one is. And uh, another HA here, this time a Viva. 66. What is it with pink cars? I think too many people have been watching that Barbie film. That's what it is. And then we've got um, Bedford HA van. This will probably be, this point, maybe the um, uh, 1.2. Later, it was a 1.3. 73, 74. HB Viva GT, this one. It looks rather fetching. I can't remember what the power I put what is on one of these. And then we've got an HC Viva. I have driven one of these. It was a very, very, very basic one. Uh, 72 uh, with a 1256cc engine and all drum brakes with no servo assistance. This one probably is a bit safer than that one. It's probably got a more specific, highly developed specification as well but yeah tons of these um loads of my family members have these my parents have one um, my uncle have one my grandparents have one it's interesting 67 must be a late registration so h8 sl90 i think that was the sort of fastest type of viva ha that you could buy i've never seen so many vivas together this is an h an HB Viva Estate. It's actually very stylish. I, I like the coat bottle look. I like the look of the estate. That's a, it's a nice car, that. I like the blue one. First car built, obviously, the, the Vauxhall factory up at um, Ellesmere Port, which is still going today. That is um, quite an early one. It's a 1963. Wow. She says on there that the um, Ellesmere Port plant only came in the stream in 64, so that's actually built at Luton now. Um, another HC Viva here. It's a deluxe. Hopefully you get a bit more specification in your deluxe than you do in the, um, in the one I drove. But also a 672, that one. 65 Viva. Let's have a look at the uh, rear of these two. My gosh, it's absolutely full of friends. I've never seen so many friends in one car. Was he having some fun? Deluxe, deluxe. Right, well, I think that's it um, for part 17 of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 
NEC Classic Car Show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video in the comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for some more incorrect information.